The story takes place in an Irish bar. It was Sunday evening in the winter. It was dark outside, so all I could focus on was the room. My friend was due to arrive in about half an hour, so it was just me. I had told myself to put my phone away. I wasn't thinking of my to-dos on Monday morning, and there was a band playing in the corner. For the first time that week, I had freed myself from my immediate life. I took a look around. There must have been 20 people in this bar. And I went around and imagined the room from their perspective. To them, I was just a stranger at another table, a face and a black jumper, nothing more. I said to myself, there are 20 versions of this event here in this one place. Let's take the man singing in the band. He was in a completely different world, in the world of the song. Occasionally he would look vaguely around the bar, but most of the time his eyes were closed and he was imagining another place. Maybe he noticed me once or twice when I clapped after a song, but otherwise, that was it. I was just a part of the bar. Next to me was a man focused purely on the music. I didn't look at him too carefully because that would have been a bit awkward but he was clearly there for that one purpose and he wasn't paying much attention to anybody or anything else around him but the songs. By contrast, there was a man standing at the bar with a big moustache who had clearly been drinking from fairly early in the day. He had begun yelping or calling out to the music and I could see him flashing his gaze around the room, looking for someone to reciprocate his energy and pay him attention. I could even feel him sort of staring at me one time to get a reaction to something he had done. And like many other people in the room, I kept my face towards the band and ignored him. But I wondered what he was going to do next, what he thought about that move from me, whether he thought that was deliberate or whether I just didn't notice him. Finally, there was the barman who was eyeing up this drinker suspiciously, wondering if he was on the verge of becoming a problem. I could see him looking over at him in between serving pints. I had seen this barman once before, a few months previously, and I wondered how long he had been working in that bar. Now, this view on the world is quite rare, I guess, for most of us. When it happens, it is a form of transcendence. You realise that the reality is not something objective in itself but it is the collection of these different perspectives coming together. Once you've grasped that, a small place can actually become very big. You can see the whole world in a bar. You absorb these perspectives and as you do, you become bigger as a person. This is exactly what you do as a writer through character development. Take a classic example like Les Miserables. Over hundreds of pages, Hugo explores characters that range from rich and poor, cross generations, young and old, the force of order against the force of uprising. He had to keep all these characters playing around in his mind. It was like he was walking around with his own Irish bar in his pocket, ready to write down on the page. There is a famous photo of Victor Hugo, which I'll link in the description, where he's looking up towards the sky with his hand on his head. And the caption is Victor Hugo talking to God. And this is quite true in a way because the God view is above all individual lives. You can go into everyone's mind, know what they're thinking and feeling. And this is what Hugo managed to do in Les Miserables. Let me offer a film example as well. This one is much less famous, but it's one of my absolute favorites. It's a comedy from the 70s called Nashville. And this one claims to have 24 main characters. The way it operates is that you may have a scene focused on a particular character. You'll get really invested in their story and then you won't see them again for another hour. But you won't have another fully blown scene dedicated to them. 
Instead, they may pop up at the back of a bar during a scene that's focused on someone else. That someone else may get up to grow, grab a beer, and you will overhear snippets of their conversation whilst he's waiting for the beer to come. That is how you know how their story is progressing. And life is like this. We all have these intersecting stories that pop up here and there and have more or less of an influence on our own lives. To wrap things up, this is what you're doing as a writer all the time. You are just like that person in the Irish bar, looking around, absorbing the perspectives of these different characters and using that to expand people's sense of the world, expand their sense of reality beyond themselves. And that is ultimately where the potential of life lies. So the way to live many lives is to write fiction.